Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Prep with Alethea. What's my story? Well, I am Alethea Faye Nobles, a real estate transaction analyst and licensed North Carolina broker and realtor. And I'm also a Virginia referral salesperson. I am the owner of Data Key by Alethea, a real estate company located right here in North Carolina. And I am the founder of the preparatory process for real estate preservation aka prep program. My prep curriculum. Okay, so for my prep stages, um, students, sorry, I use my real estate transaction cycle uh, and its six stages to inform, educate, and assist them with positioning their uh, finances and real estate in an alignment with North Carolina's robust and competitive marketplace before they sign a sales or purchase agreement with me. And if you would like to find uh, more uh, information in regards to the six stages where we first start here at preparation, then we move to examination, then acquisition, execution, preservation, disposition, and finally, if you're looking to start over, once again, you'll start right back at preparation. If you wanna find out a little bit more about the individual information pertaining to each one of these six stages, then go to my website, prep123.com and click on the tab transaction cycle or just cycle on the website. My next um, tutorial or tool that I use um, with my prep students is my real estate transaction for you segment. So basically looking at these six stages, what I do is I spotlight and I use real actual real estate transactions that have been recorded um, with North Carolina's registers of deeds. And I do this in order to provide additional clarity as to how a subject transaction relates to each of the six stages. And in this video today, you will get an opportunity to get a, a, a snippet of one of my um, um, actual real estate um, transactions for you segments will be included in this video too. The next tool that I use is my real estate transaction problem solving. So what's the point of, uh, you know, educating if we don't find a way to find feedback, number one, to just to make sure that your students um, um, or the recipient of your information is actually understanding what you're trying to um, relate to them. So you wanna find a way without giving them the answers, you wanna find a way to engage them. So basically using this tool um, is a method of engaging and encouraging my students to think beyond their textbook or Google knowledge by using a subject transactions recorded real estate documents to solve problems. So once again, this is just for educational purposes for my students, it's not for me or for them to think that they're going to be learning any type of legalities or um, you know anything that will involve that we would necessarily um, um, hand over to um, a North Carolina attorney firm to advise um, accordingly in any type of real estate transaction here in North Carolina. Okay, so let's get started. Let's try to use those three tools under the prep curriculum to kind of um, get a better understanding of what I'm conveying to you all today in this video. <clears throat> so first, we're going to be looking at a transaction that was um, that um, occurred on November the 23rd of last year. So this we are spotlighting today the transaction the Dillon acquired for $236 million. Um, a physical GPS um, reference would be 223 Southwest Street right here in Raleigh, North Carolina. So we're gonna take a, a look at this transaction and we're just gonna try to take this real estate transaction that has been recorded in Wake County, uh, Register of Deeds, um, and then we're gonna apply it to uh, one, two, maybe three of the six stages. You decide um, which stages that you know the documents could pertain to, and um, and then we're going to go from there to the next part of the um, you know next part of the two. Well, I actually present um, some problem solving for you to solve as the prep students and to provide feedback to me in the comments sections. All righty. So 
First of all, the reason why I do this, number one, is a hobby. It's been a hobby for mine of over 20 years, just like those who like to solve crossword um, puzzles or put together jigsaw puzzles. I am a person who likes to connect the dots. I like to move from the paper to the actual structure. That helps me to find my click. And also it's a way also to also appreciate the values that go beyond just the paper transaction. Um, so, you know, just for something to do, if you're looking for something to do after this video, um, um, you want to get out with the family or just yourself, why not plan, plan a road, bike, walk, trip, depending on how far you are to um, Raleigh, North Carolina, and take a look at the Dillon and allow yourself to experience its urban culture and amenities. Um, so a little bit of background, and you can find out by going directly to um, the um, a website, which is the DylanRaleigh.com, and they have other features on there, the list of their active um, the tenants and also um, you know, some of the um, spots, restaurants, cafes that you can um, take advantage of. But basically it is a mixed use development located right down here in Raleigh's warehouse district. district. And it's adjacent to um, our union station. It has an 18 story tower. It comes with premium high rise office spaces, street level retail and restaurant spaces, signature skyline dining space, a unique two building luxury apartment homes and also an adjoining um, parking deck. So like I said, you can find out more about the Dillon and go in depth. And of course, if you have any specific information about the Dillon, please reach out to um, the contact person on that website. And also before planning your trip, because we are still um, adhering to the um, CDCs and the Corona task force and Governor um, Cooper's executive orders, just make sure that you um, understand what is considered essential activities in North Carolina before planning your trip. A lot is going on now, um, you know, because we are still in the pandemic and there's, you know, some new cases and things and things are moving up versus down. So I just want to make sure when you do go out there, you just be safe, you know, rem uh, rem remember your three W's and just, and also just try to have some fun, get a little air, but at the same time, I want you to be um, cautious and remain um, safe out there. <clears throat> Okay, so in the beginning, of course, there's always a beginning to any um, acquisition or disposition. Okay, so we're going to look at um, first stages, disposition and acquisition. So a lot of times, most of the time, you, in order to acquire, something has to be disposed in order for you to acquire it. So here, the story with the Dillon. So first, it started off with the Dillon was originally owned by Dillon Supply Company, and they decided um, to sell 2.52 acres or tracks number one through eight to Dillon Station LLC for $13.8 million, uh, which was recorded same county um, on 12-18-2015. So just taking a look at this, um, if you, like I said, if you're interested in trying to find your click and putting things together, the paper to the structure. So it started off, so if you went to the uh, Wakes County's Register of Deeds website, you got to the search real estate documents, you will simply scroll down to the bottom and enter the book and the page number. So this in this um, documents here, these are certainly not all of the documents related to these transactions, but I, what I did is pull out certain doc, um, um, transaction, real estate transaction documents that are um, easy for you to probably get a grasp of what I'm talking about and also sort of add, like I said, a, a little bit more picture to the paper. So if you enter in book um, number 016245 and then page 00820, you will come to this first page right here and you can see where I've re referenced the parcel real estate identifications numbers and there are eight there if you can see there. And the reason I'm spotlighting here is because this information on this page will also convey to the problem solving section. And also if you look at here, um, the transaction itself, the um, subject transaction, the Dillon, um, comprised of two parcel IDs. So you have parcel ID 1703581533, which is 0.512 acres. And then you have the second parcel, which is 1703581210, which is 2.029 acres. So those two together make up the Dillon real estate transaction for our educational purpose today um, that we are talking about. All right, let's move forward. 
All right, the next stage is just um, the execution stage, which is also a very important stage here. So basically in the execution stage is that, you know, once, you know, we, later on, we're gonna talk about the preparation stage, but right now in execution, once you have ident identified your next step plan and which the next step plan is basically just, uh, it's just the outline for your real estate of real estate objectives. It's the reason why you are wanting to acquire real estate. And there are several reasons why you may uh, want to buy real estate, but for whatever reason you decided to purchase real estate, to acquire real estate, what you need to do is now, once you have acquired it, you just don't sit there. You don't let it sit there. You don't let the paper sit there. You get out there and you start executing whatever you need to execute to make things happen. Because remember, after execution, you want to move on to your next um, stage, which is preservation. And then last is disposition. Okay, so let's take a look here. So in this in this scenario here, after the property had been um, conveyed to those eight tracks had been conveyed to Dillon Station LLC, well, they executed their plan. Now, remember, I don't have the inside knowledge of behind the scene what they were actually thinking, but based on this document here, I can see that there was a development development plan and part of that development plan required them to recombine those original eight tracks into the two tracks that you all that I referenced in the previous page. So here, um, what they did, not only did they um, combine those eight lots, um, eight tracks into two, two of those original eight track lots were the parent track. So they kept two of those um, real estate ID numbers, 00183308, and 00813327, those were the original parent tracks of the eight tracks. So what they did is kept those, but now on our in, in our system or in the county system, they are now known as the child tracks, okay? But those were originally part of the eight tracks, the real estate identification numbers, but they were retained. And then what we have is that they simply changed the legal descriptions. So now we have a new lot one and a new lot two, okay? So you'll see this. And all of this occurred on um, April the 8th in 2016. So 2015, the original, um, where, where we're going to start as the original owner, um, convey um, eight tracks or 2.52 acres to Dillon Station LLC. And then under Dillon LLC's execution stage, for whatever reason, they decided that they needed to combine those tracks. Instead of having eight individual tracks, they have now retained two of the eight and then have, um, um, you know, and then put those um, 2.52 acres under those um, real estate um, ID numbers, okay? So we'll move forward. All right, and this is just giving you an idea. So I'm referencing this as prep training education tutorial plat one. But of course, if you were to go to the actual register of deed, books of deeds, books of maps, you would certainly go down here at the bottom and you will be looking at um, 2000 map number 2016, page 538. So here I'm just referencing on, on this map here, plat map, is that you can see the layout here of lot number one and lot number two. And I'll, so right here, there's, and this is what it will look like if it was put together. So this is, this page and the very next page is actually probably a longer legal, legal size type um, plat. And what they have done as far as ease of communicating and for visual sake, they have been split up on two separate page. But if you were to take this plat and then the next plat number two, put those together, you would you will see here in this top part where I have an error. It says new lot one, new lot two. So it's more of a long rectangular shape in the end. All righty. So we'll look here. And if you look also, you can see the references to the old track numbers that were combined in two. So we'll take a, a look at the next one slide. And we will see here in plot two where we have lot two, which gives a reference there also. So, and on the top here, the match lines so of these, if this page and the pre previous plat was printed, you would take that match line, lay it down on the table and match it up with the match line on page, um, the, the very next 
previous page that I indicated to you. And then you will see a legal size type paper. And then you'll be able to get a better picture and idea of what that looks like. So once again, this is just all for educational purposes. It's not for you to get um, deep dive and heavy involved into the legalities of this transaction. It's more of a visual so that you'll get an understanding of the site layout when you actually go out there to see um, the Dillon and then also see the, you know, the site, the streets and all that direction. And you'll be able to see that it actually turns out to be um, the shape of a rectangle. All right, let's move on to the next page. Okay, so let's get ready to solve our first problem. So remember, I'm gonna present the problem. You're gonna solve the problem. All right, so the first here on our real estate transaction cycle, problem solving. So, we're going to use this, those two recorded plats to verify, verify site acreage. So um, you'll have a chance to go back and take a look at those um, plats. Or if not, you can go to the website, um, Wake County's website, Register of Deeds, pull those two out and print them. And then you can put those together. But you'll need those plats in order to answer those questions. So either go back in the video and take a look at them, screenshot them, or um, you know, go to the website and then you'll be able to um, print those out. All right, so as I told you, um, the recombining of those eight tracks into two. So uh, if you look here, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, six. So remember one of the parent um, tracks was retained. So parent track number one was, um, which is still the art real estate ID number 0018308. Well, that was already retained. So that's one of them. Then you have the other six here, track two, three, four, five, and six that was combined into that one. Into So now the new pin number is 17035812101. And then you have the second pin, 17035815333. And that um, original parent track was um, 0018327, two, which was originally track seven. So track eight was combined into um, track number seven. All righty. So let's move forward. Okay, so using the recorded plats to verify conveyance acreage. All righty. So we're going to look at this and then. Remember, we combine eight tracks into two parent child tracks. Now just put your, put your thinking cap on and just remember the plats. And like I said, if you need to go back to the video, um, just go back to that, look, go back and look at, up to those plats, take a look at them. If you need to go to the website, you wanna go to um, Wake County's Register of Deeds website and you wanna put in that map book number um, in there to order to pull those up. <clears throat> All right, so this is the problem that you will want to solve, that you need to solve. So after reviewing both prep plat one and plat two, what was the total acreage combined with real estate ID 0018308? Once again, after reviewing both prep plat one and plat two, what was the total acreage combined with real estate ID 0018308. Well, I don't provide the answer because once again, this is a way for me to engage and also to make sure that you are understanding the information that I am providing. So all participants um, who, who looking to solve this problem, you can enter your answers here in, the, in this video's um, at a public comment section. Once this video is uploaded to YouTube, you'll be able to go in the comment section. And, and this is just something fun. Um, it's not all that serious. It's not, you know, it's not, you're gonna be tested you know, with a grade. It's just giving you something, a way to apply and to be able to train your eyes to look beyond just what's in front of you in your textbook. And then also I will be, um, in my next segment, I will re reveal the correct answers um, to this question in my next. So just a note, just remember when calculating the total acreage, refer to the old lots data, okay? So this would be very interesting. All right, so let's advance forward to our 
subject transaction, which occurred on November the 23rd, 2020. And that's the actual recorded date with the register of deeds. All right, so this is, we're gonna talk a little bit about stage, preparation stage. All right, this is the stage. This is a very important stage. This is the stage that you, you do not want to uh, skip. Preparation or ex uh, examination is a must before acquisition. You want to make sure you take your time. You want to make sure that you're clearly understanding what you're getting yourself in. Because once you become the owner of that real estate, you assume all responsibilities um, and liabilities um, that comes with that property and um, with that real estate. So this is your opportunity to strategically align yourself with individuals and businesses that will successfully assist with establishing and executing your real estate objectives and continue to provide added value services throughout your real estate transaction cycle. That's very important. You just don't want to align yourself with anyone. You want someone that's gonna be there, not only during the acquisition state, but hopefully all the way until you decide um, to dispose of your real estate. That's what we call long-term relationship building. And hopefully that's what we're out there. Those of us that are providing services to the general per, um, public, that should be our ultimate goal, not our commissions, not how much money we can make off of uh, what we're doing, whether we're, you know, giving um, edu educational tutorials. It should be about building relationships, but more importantly, um, conveying um, fact, uh, you know, actual factual um, information so that you are in a position to strategically align yourself um, adequately. And then once you have identified, and now I know there are several of you that are very um, real estate savvy, so that doesn't apply. If you are able to do handle your acquisitions uh, alone uh, outside of the fact of engaging your, your long-term attorney firm, then that's fine. This is not for you. This is definitely for those who are new to acquiring real estate, those who have not purchased or disposed of real estate in a while, and those who are just, just quite frankly, just scared of the whole process. What you do want to do is to align yourself. And then once you identify your strategic um, alliance, then you and that individual or individuals or companies will sit down together and prepare your next step plan. Is the outline used for creating your real estate objective. There is no set amount of pages. It could be a note. It could be just a one statement. But the whole goal is, is that you are aligning yourself with someone not only to um, provide added value service to you, but for them to sort of um, hold you accountable to make sure that you are doing what you set out to originally do. Now, remember your next step plan can always be modified. Sometime life changes come about. Definitely this pandemic has probably um, caused a lot of us to take a look at our next step plans when it comes to thinking about why we're going to buy real estate or why we need to um, sell or uh, dispose of our real estate now versus holding on to the next four or five years. Okay, so now who will you align with? Well, I gave some, I have uh, provided a list of some um, strategic alliances that I have found over my 20 something plus years, um, 25 years, um, um, starting from family and friends all the way to a photographer. You know, take a look at this list of people. You decide you don't have to limit yourself. It all depends on your specific real estate objectives, your needs what you are comfortable with, your knowledge, you know, their knowledge. But the most important thing is that you identify someone. Um, you don't, you know, if you're, if you're new to this whole process, if this is something that you're really seriously thinking about doing in the next two or three months, um, and you, you want to make sure that you do everything right the first time, then you want to take a look at this list. And if there's someone or some type of service that's not on my list, certainly add it to your list. This is not um, all exclu uh, the only all exclusive list out there. This is the these are the individuals that I've um, had to partner with throughout my lifetime, out throughout my professional real estate career, and I felt like uh, without their services, because you know what you don't want to do if you are not. Um, educated or trained um, enough to do it. You don't want to be doing everyone's job. 
you want to delegate uh, responsibilities. So to make sure that things occur on a timely basis and also they occur within the, your time frame that you identified in your real in your initial um, next step plan. Okay, so dispositions and acquisition. Uh, and this is probably the primary um, primary stages that you will be um, hearing a whole lot about. You yourself will probably be more involved with, um, you know, throughout your real estate uh, transaction um, history. So you want to make sure that preparation examination is also in place before you get to acquisition and disposition. So here, let's go back and look at the subject transaction and see how they align, who were their strategic alliances and just see who the seller and buyer and what happened. Okay, so once again, it's the Dylan. Okay, so the seller in this um, particular transaction is Dylan Station. Remember, they acquired it from the supply warehouse company. And then they now, on, no, on November the 23rd of 2020, they um, sold the property to MCP Dillon LLC. And who, who did they, who did each one rely on? Who did the um, seller rely on for assistance and who did the buyer? Well, Dillon Station LLC um, strategic alliances were Kane Realty Corporation. Um, a lot of you are familiar with them here in Raleigh. KRC, which is a development company, development and management company. And it also with Federal Capital Partners FCP, a privately held real estate investment company. In regards to the buyer, their strategic alliance is MetLife Investment Management. So you see, even though you don't see all of this behind the scene, when you go by and put the dots with the structure and you put things in a visual format, you can understand that through these six stages, most real estate transactions are going to occur in this manner. And there is going to be someone, especially when you're dealing with a lot of commercial transaction, there is going to be a lot of time that the actual owner is relying on a third party um, to um, handle their transaction, to do their behind um, due diligent research, to make sure everything is in place before they sign um, on, you know, to sign that deal. So in this particular case, you know, check mark, um, this transaction showed that the seller and buyer um, relied on strategic alliances. And I can only imagine for a $236 million transaction, um, this was probably the, the best thing that they, uh, you know, that they had did. Okay, so here's one more problem. Okay, so, um, Switch a gear, so this is not using the um, you know the the plats anymore. So those two plats, one and two prep tutorial, one and two, um, those for that transaction about calculating the um, actual site acreage that was conveyed, um, you know, under those two different um, parent-child um, parcels that were retained. In this problem solving, we're going to be using North Carolina's excess taxes to calculate a seller's sales price. So some of you are familiar with the um, excess taxes, also formerly known as deed transfer tax or revenue stamps. So in this particular um, case, if any of you have um, taken any classes or read up on your own or just done your own, you know that every, um, the rate is calculated, you know, $1 um, per $500 of the consideration. So basically of the purchase price. Okay, and it's calculated on the seller's full purchase on sales price. And remember the transaction that we're talking about was sold for 236 million, okay, hint. Okay, and typically um, just a background note for those who are trying to keep up and are in some type of stage where they are all working on some type of training where they have to sort of get this information down and learn it for their pre-license or post-licensing class. Um, this um, tax is typically paid in North Carolina by the seller. And also you you want to make sure you state it in the whole dollar amount. So if you had a you once you come up with a calculation and it comes out to be $825.50, just round it off to $826. All righty. So let's go to our first problem here. 
All right, so once again, we're incorporating actual recorded um, real estate um, transaction documents. So once again, if you need to get a print of this, page one of this doc, the conveyance document, you can see here where Dillon Station LLC was the grantor or seller, and they sold it to um, the grantee, which is um, the buyer, MCP Dillon LLC. So looking at this here, you have, now take note, you have this document here, part one. So that's just telling you there's another document that goes with this transaction. So the subject transaction is the Dillon was acquired for $236 million. Okay, here's the problem to solve. If the seller paid 302,000 excise taxes for this portion of the recorded conveyance transaction, what was the seller's sales price? Once again, participants, you may enter your answer in the videos edit public um, comment section and then the correct answer. Now remember, this is part one, transactions for 236 million. Your combined answer should equal to 236 million. So let's go to the next slide so you can get an understanding of what I'm talking about. You only paid 302,000 there. Here's the remaining of it. In the second uh, recorded transaction, you can look on the top here and you will see where that could be found. And you can also go to the uh, Wake County Register of Deeds website to take a look at that. And this is for uh, 170,000 excise tax. So once again, if the seller paid 170,000 in taxes for this portion of the recorded conveyance transaction, what was the seller's sales price? Remember, your combined answer should equal to $236 million. So that's telling you that you have to calculate both answers to get the correct answer. Okay, all righty. So take a look at those. If you need to come back to this section, to this um, and the previous, just go back and replay the video. And then if you need to screenshot, do that. Or you can go to, like I said, to the um, Register of Deeds website, pull this page up, and then you'll be able to um, continue with your calculations. All right, so that was the end of my first video. So in this video, I was able to give you a little bit of uh, explanation about the six stages of my real estate transaction cycle. This cycle is used with all of my prep students and clients before they acquire or sell their real estate in North Carolina. This is a must. Um, I just, I need to make sure that you are aware of all the things that are involved, you know, especially in the preparation and examination stages before we sit down and start talking about um, looking at real estate and actually submitting um, written purchase offers to um, North Carolina um, sellers here. So you want to make sure that um, we follow these at least I want to make sure that we are following these stages properly. And also it's a good way for us to find out where we went wrong, if something went wrong, what stage, what happened, when did it happen, and what, what was not going correctly, what was not conveyed properly, what was not interpreted properly, okay? So until my next segment, um, Real Estate Transaction For You segment, or real estate transaction cycle problem solving. This is the message that I will always leave with you all. Sit back, relax, imagine the possibilities. I wanna thank you for joining me today on my Prep with Alethea um, series. It's been fun. I look forward to uh, our future videos together. And I'm very excited to see um, those of you all who are planning to participate in the problem solving segments. Uh, hopefully that these are something helpful, something to do during this pandemic. If you have nothing else to do and you're looking to try to um, connect the dots from paper to, um, to structure, then this is certainly an activity um, for you to do that. And also it gives you an opportunity to learn a little bit about um, our North Carolina uh, communities and for us brokers out there is to expand our knowledge in our working um, territories. So I thank you once again. Take care of yourself until later.